Oops. Okay. Well, let's just make sure that uh, that she's in ship shape. Uh, what's in the equipment? Uh, got the plane one. We've got the plane one. Yep. I have the. I've just put first slightly faster torpedoes. Sure. It's what I use. I don't use the additional um, time because I hate being trapped in an attack I don't want to take. Yeah. So. Um, I put HAP on the bomb because that just spend more time in the close range continuous AA, so I just put in there. Sure. And then uh, just extra planes, really, and just lower, lower um, restoration time. Cool. All of that sounds great. There's no problems That's at cool. all there. If you're doing a, a random, or sorry, a ranked or something clan battles, you might consider consumable mod just so that you could have better uh, fighters in slot five. But uh, outside of that, you're perfectly okay. Yeah. That is the build that I run. Uh, okay. What's going on with the captain? <clears throat> uh, I've got a well, basic nine. Uh, mm -hmm. I have last stand, last gasp. Just basically, I like to, for the torpedo bombers, because you get free. I find often able to do one drop uh, with the last three planes. Um, just got flat because slow torpedo because that's quite a lot of damage and uh, it just helps firm up the reticle a bit. Uh, yeah, so I have no problems with this either. You have the base nine, which is perfectly okay. The torpedo damage on the Lexington is not a joke, and you are definitely going to be using torpedoes on battleships. So having proximity fuse is going to help get more of that damage through. Uh, sight stab is a little bit. It's a controversial choice, but it's not a. It's a comfort pick. Um, <clears throat> And also, as a comfort pick, I'm I'm more leaning towards sight stab for Lexington and Midway when trying to bomb destroyers because if, if the destroyer is maneuvering successfully, it does take longer for your uh, your reticle to firm up, which means you have a little less time to maneuver to catch them. And sight stab theoretically should uh, give you a little more time. So I do like the sight stab pick. I'm perfectly fine with that. And then the flak armor I think is great. Because at tier 8, you are going to interact with a lot of flak. You might get up-tiered, where you interact with a lot of flak. And the Lexington, the Lexington has enough, enough health to deal with incoming AA and deal with situations. But uh, you, it still helps you get you from point A to point B. <laughs> it pulls a little bit of the chaos out of it. Uh, for advanced players that don't really hit very much flak, you can of course choose whether to do that or not. I would still recommend it in like ranked or clan battles because it pulls some of the RNG out of the situation. But for general play, yeehaw. So it's perfectly fine. And the last thing on Last Gasp, Last Gasp works very well with US carriers, so all good with that as well. Um, <coughs> Alright, uh, you don't have to run any flags or anything. I don't know if you have any of that stuff, but you do have a camo on, which uh, is good. Just... Extra flooding chance, some XP to get me speed up to the midway. Sure. Alrighty, oh. well, if you're good to go, let's go. Come on, give me a tier 10. So, Not many BBs on patch weekend. Normally you see double this figure. Maybe they're scared of the subs. Yeah. It's annoying when they target you, but then otherwise it just doesn't do much. Mm -hmm. So for the first uh, plane type, you have two options. You can take uh, attack planes. The rocket planes so that you can uh, zoom out across the ocean very quickly because the US has the fastest attack planes or maybe they rival with the Germans but they're very fast um, or you could take bombs in which case you could try to hunt an isolated DD but there's one sub and there's one DD so it's not very likely that you're gonna have a, a destroyer interaction so I would say uh, rocket planes are gonna be the choice here because it's gonna give you the information that you're looking for the fastest and you could rocket into a cruiser if you happen to get a good shot yeah. Are you streaming your screen or are you streaming World of Warships? It should be World of Warships to you. Oh, because I don't have any sound. 
much sadness. Oh, do you want this sound? Well, I have yeah. no idea. It's nice. <laughs> it's up to you. It doesn't matter. I'm just used to the sound. It was like, what? Rar, there's nothing there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not now. Not now. No, no, no. Because you're too close to the enemy at this point. No, no. Because yeah, <laughs> the then you'll just be sailing into a bunch of ships and, and get your planes murdered. All right, so the enemy CV is trying to derp around on your Terrible. Uh, terrible should be fine. He, I'm sure he can take care of himself. And really, he's continuing to charge forward, so hopefully he doesn't get mauled just from being spotted. Watch out for the Minotaur AA at 7 clicks. So, there is, uh, there is a fair amount of Tier 10 Cruiser. Uh, outside of the Ibuki, all the rest of them are going to be unpleasant to deal with. But it's about finding your spot. You might as well just go ahead and uh, pre-drop here. And then find something and shoot, just so you can have a little damage interaction and then figure out what you want to do. Uh, okay. And uh, skip the animation and recall to the carrier. Good shot, by the way. Um, so, you're choosing Torps? What are you looking to go for? The Pommel. The Pommel 11. The Pommel in Iowa. If I can get to them. So, I don't really think you want to go yeah. for the Pommel in Iowa. I think you actually want to work on the Petropavlovsk. The one that's in the front. Because the way that he's angled, you can approach from the F line. Uh, now, you might be able to soar through and strike something else, but realistically, with uh, three ships near near to being on top of each other, you're probably just going to have a one-way trip. So you might actually want to uh, pre-drop because it's probably just going to be a one-way trip. But the Petropavlovsk is basically exposed and because of its ability to have radar is going to make it a much more fearsome frontline opponent and you want it to either bully it or send it off the field, something like that. It's easier to kill a cruiser than it is to kill a battleship and your teammate is already shooting the cruiser. Your team is already shooting the cruiser. Heal. There you go. I think that's three. <clears throat> I would actually go back with Torps a second time, but bombs are good too, in the sense that you're you're getting your um your inventory rotating, so you're getting, you know, regen from all different sources. Now there's a sub that was spotted in Bravo. Can you go spot that sub again? So, something to remember. The Bilal, which was spotted in B, is very close to a U-2501. If you give information, if you can spot that sub, and the U-2501 gets vision for free, then he can ping and throw torps at an enemy sub, although he's on the he's at max depth for some reason. But if he saw the enemy sub, he would be able to throw pings at it and throw torps at it without having to burn his hydrophone. I think you just go to the cruiser that's pushing to the left. There was well, okay, it's fine. Though so you're being driven out because there's AA over there, so it is what it is. You probably want an engine boost because you're gonna have to burn through the AA of the Petro. This is gonna be painful. Nope. Well, okay, the turning back was a little sus. Yeah. Torps. That's a good. <clears throat> okay, so the Minotaur goes down, which is nice. Um, when you committed to B and you were starting to take AA, like you're, if you're looking for the sub, you got to find it. You know, if you're gonna spend plane health doing something, you got to do it. You can't waffle. Um, so when you went into Bravo, but then you turned back out you gave up a few planes for free. So you're gonna lose some planes finding the sub, but finding the sub can help your team. It could potentially, again, if the U-boat wasn't doing a secret mission or something, um, I guess he's gonna try to kill the carrier, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you also could have, after trying to find the sub, gone over and bombed the Minotaur, 
Although the Minotaur is dead now, which is nice. Man, the sap's probably a C anyway. Mm, poss possibly, yeah. Try to save your fighter for when you're on top of the sub. Nope. Oh, no, it's cooking. Yeah. No you do way. have to fight her, though. Fighter, 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 fighter. Because the uh, enemy fighter is just going to latch onto you. So, yeah, you can't just hang out in that. <clears throat> think I might have to bail. No. Uh, I, well, okay, maybe. It looks a little sus because you don't have teammates up in the EF line. But I guess, yes, if the battleships in the south can't be stopped, that's going to be a real thing. So, your fighter stopped the fighter on the Kagero. You're going to want to get a fighter down there just to keep updates on that. And uh, I guess it's a question on if you think you can get kills in the south. Because I don't know if you can. Uh, petrol. The only ones that petrol, to be honest, the rest are too healthy for me to do anything. So, if you want to drop a fighter on the Kagero, that's good. That's information. But you need kills right now. You need to get enemies off the board. The sub in Bravo, it's not likely to net you a kill very soon, um, which is unfortunate. But now, if you're going to go for that Petro, you're going to be diving through a lot of AA to get to him. So usually if you're going to be striking stuff, you want to nibble, nibble at the edges of a formation. Yeah, there's, there's nothing... We're not getting anything here. Bombs. Bombs for the sub. Because you're going to have an active fighter that you can put over the submarine to keep it lit. Because you've got two ships. you got a Drake, you have a Minotaur, you have things that are close to the sub. If you have some interactions there, they could try to potentially depth charge it. Um, it could certainly try to keep them safe. We have to go where our team can have some influence, and right now it's it's a little awkward because you have so many people up on the BC line. You you should spot the sub very soon. Drop a fighter here, please. All right, he might actually just have gone to max depth. Turn to the left. 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 Well, okay, they actually just killed it. Uh, I was gonna look and say, like, let's look at the ship in A. Let's look at the ship where your team can get a kill. Well, then they literally just killed it. Uh, let's try to find the Ibuki. He's probably up on the six line if you just go straight north. I think we just ignore C. C is off in its own little zip code right now as far as your team is concerned. So there's just really not much going on down there other than a whole bunch of ships with AA clumping up and stuff. So, let's see if we can find the cruiser, the Ibuki, that's disappeared off the radar. So, it's probably going to be near the Re the Republic. There it is. There's yeah. the Ibuki. So, do you approach from behind or do you approach from... Because this is a Republic there, so it's better to approach from behind the Ibuki. It would be best to approach from behind. You want to use an engine boost. And then after you drop, you hard turn off to like the left or something to try to circle around. But I don't think you're going to get a second drop here, so. Okay, let's go back to the carrier. Let's get rockets. So rockets are going to move quickly because everything is so far away. And let's try to reacquire the sub. We need to know where the sub is. We also might be able to find, uh, we also might be able to find the Kigero. Try to give information there. Your team is eventually going to get out of A. Um, but we still have to get something for them to focus on to kill. So we know where the Kagero is because he just smoked in Bravo. Can we find the sub? Is it worth finding sub in a CV? I was, I'm just wondering. As a general rule, because... I mean, term time-wise, is it better to find sub or is it just go strike something, take pressure off your team? Can you say that again? Is it better to looking for sub or is it better to strike something? I mean, in terms of game impact. Well, there's not a lot to strike other than throwing some damage into the Palmer, which has all, most of his health anyway. Like, your team isn't going to help you kill him, so the damage isn't going to go anywhere. You don't have enough damage to solo kill tier 9s and tier 10s. Maybe if, you know, 
you're one of the best CV players ever, whatever, sure, but realistically, carriers don't kill things. Carriers don't hundred to zero things. They harass and hurt things. And right now, it's trying to find what are the things that you can work on that your team can help you with, because otherwise you're just doing meaningless damage. Recall, Torps. So you are detected. So the sub is down somewhere in your detection range here, probably in, in the south. So try to watch your planes. At least I thought you were detected. Try to watch your planes for a detection indicator, because the sub has got to yep. be somewhere out there. There we go. Not detected. So probably like I-4 or something? All right, well, we don't know where they are. Uh, I guess at this point you do just strike something, but as far as uh, health goes, your team still has health. It's just it hasn't figured out how the fuck to move forward because they don't have a front line, really, and everything on the enemy team still has a lot of health. Well, there's the sub. Hopefully you get a second drop here. Hard turn to the left and swing back in. Which is what you're doing, which is great. And I think you need to keep your your uh, CV hull moving when you can. You're correct on the flank falling. Autopilot mode enabled. Actually, rocket might be better, but yeah. uh, I think bombs for the DD is fine. Ah, uh, missile there. Torps on Neptune. Too bad. No, not, you don't. Not the Neptune. Kag. Kagero to the left. Yeah. Oh, no, just the missile a torpedo on Neptune, which is a bit shame. Oh, well. Okay, and also the Republic is going to be a target that you can work on, because now you have teammates that will be shooting that. Like, any anything that your team can shoot at is what you want to be shooting at. You just can't be shooting stuff in a giant clump. So, you're going to have to find your ways in. That's dead. Good. Cag's dead. Cool. You can bomb the repub. This Petro still has too much health. Buki might be able to be fo focused on with rockets, but uh, definitely... You might get the kill. Uh, has a little more health than uh, ideal, but... Good. Nice. You can't use that. Don't even worry about it. Just recall. Well, eh, yeah, just recall. Uh, torps are fine. Rockets are fine. Whatever you want. Just uh, you need to be trying to help help your team get a beachhead. I almost would prefer to work on the Petra Pavlos because on the other side of the universe, but he's on the other side of the universe, so that sucks. Neptune's <coughs> here again. Yeah, it's the sub that's spotting you. Can you spot? There you go. You did see the sub. So that's cool. Keep your Come CV on. moving. Keep your CV moving. You might want to just manually pilot it or something for a little bit. Because there's just so little that you can do. If you can, try to get over the sub. Force the sub down to maximum depth. Because the sub is probably going to kill your all safes if the shells don't. Ends in five minutes. To the left. Yeah. Dead anyway. Yeah, Neptune's there. Well, the Neptune is here, but we want to find the sub. That is our job right now, so we're losing planes in time. 
to find the sub. <clears throat> It seems to be at maximum depth, I guess. It wasn't picked up by the other thing. You can recall. Yeah, it's just over here. Yeah, never mind. That was rough. <laughs> oh. but, but that is also yeah. part of being up-tiered. Yeah. So, Sorry, yeah. Well, of course. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, biggest thing to remember. All right. If you were in a tier 8 CV going against a tier 6 battleship, can you kill the battleship? Yes. Because you do enough damage that you could probably just solo and kill the battleship. When you're going against a tier 9 and tier 10, you just, you don't. You don't have it. Uh, not to do it by yourself. Because you're going to do, think of it this way. How much did you do that entire match? 50,000. How much would, how much was your average? 80,000. So if you do 80 to 100,000 to a Palmer and have you killed it? No. Why? Because a Pomeran has enough healing that it's going to live through that. Other people have to shoot it too, or else it, otherwise it doesn't die. <clears throat> so, um, that's where it's going to be an issue. That's where it's going to be a problem. So when you're striking stuff, you need to make sure that your team is also going to have an interaction. Rather than just kind of, yeah, I'll go shoot this, I'll go shoot that. Unfortunately, rocket planes, go, 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 scout. Uh, unfortunately, you needed to, um, there weren't a lot of options as for what you could help your team with. Or maybe it was on your flank there weren't a lot of options. I guess if you had sailed north, maybe you could have been a little more helpful at A, but I wouldn't have sailed north. I would have been trying to salvage the situation that I had in front of me, and I would have had the same problem you did. That's not to say that it would have been correct for me to sit there trying to salvage a situation that I couldn't, but I would have done the same thing that you did. Um, so hopefully this one's going to go a little better, but... Try to save your boost for the attack. No need to watch this. Uh, let's get for uh, bombs. We can either work on the gearing or we can work on the DD that's positioning itself in Charlie. Maybe if we go for the cool. destroyer that's at Charlie, we can force it to smoke. Although it's a Kiev, so it may not actually have smoke. So, <clears throat> destroyer interactions are of high importance, uh, which Really, anybody that's played for a while is going to know that. But if you cripple their front line, it's harder for them to have a way in. For instance, in the last game, you guys had one sub and one, uh, one destroyer. You didn't have a front line, so the battleships and the cruisers didn't know how to go in. That's just the reality of the situation. So if you can bully, cripple, kill the front line, then the lines behind it are going to be uh, confused. Make sure you're turning while the bombs are dropping. Because we're getting closer to enemy AA there. I'll try to do this clockwise thing that I see you do, but... Um, so the reticle okay. needs... You are, you have to put the reticle... Uh, if you're going to curl to the left, you put the reticle to the right to give you room to curl. You don't want to put the reticle on the target, you want to put it to the side of the target, away from, you know, the opposite of where you're trying to go. So if you want to turn to the right, you start with the reticle on the left, to give you room to turn right, like you just did. Just drop. You have one bomb, so it doesn't matter. Well, actually, he had a fighter, I guess, um, because uh, you're spotting him. I'm sorry. Oops. It's yeah. still early. <laughs> Hopefully your Venezia okay. claps him. Uh, I'll go for a game right now, at B. No, he's not dead yet.
pilot mode enabled. Roger. Okay, so you have a Kremlin on the 6 line, a something on the 7-8, Minnesota, and then a Venezia on the outside, or a Veneto? Veneto. Uh, Destination reached. Autopilot mode disabled. Yeah, you're gonna have to work on the gearing after this. In fact, as soon as you take this shot, you need to go work on the gearing. Uh, cause the gearing is just YOLOing it down center. Um, cause you've got no assets in the center, which does mean if he wants to slip through undetected he can, so he's playing secret submarine. Uh, he's in a destroyer, but he's actually in a sub. So, let's just try to camp that and give some information and help the Napoli. Also, because the, uh, the Kiev got out. You know, you did, you did your job, you may not have gotten the Kiev dead, but you got the Kiev off the front line. He's now literally hiding behind the battleships, which means they don't have a front line at the moment. Hopefully your gearing doesn't get murdered. He seems to be alive. Uh, Napoli's dead. Uh, he's having a real bad day, yeah. Yeah, long ass smoke as well. Uh, it will be, but uh, he doesn't know that you're here because there's nothing here to spot you. So he's gonna leave his smoke screen very soon. Right, um, come on, I'm on the brakes because you your reticle was a little too far ahead of him. You also might want to start reversing or something <clears throat> when you have a chance, because you you could be susceptible to long range battleship fire. Cool. More, more. Don't watch. Go, go, go. You are in danger. <laughs> Skip the animation, get the next planes in the air. So your team's doing okay at sea, which is great. You have to deal with this, the, uh, the gearing. More to the left. More to the left when you put that reticle. You need room to turn in. He's helping you by turning out, but realistically, you need to give yourself room to turn in. If you just put the reticle, like, on the, the ass of his ship as opposed to the middle of his ship, there's not a lot of room there. <clears throat> Destination so again, that was too close. You gotta think of it like a clock face. Yeah, no fights with that. So, C is awkward. You should. What the fuck? There's a gearing, he torped you. Just recall, just recall. You're not gonna get anything, he's in smoke, and he's also got defensive fire, so be killing your shit. Uh, bombs or torps, pick something. You're either gonna have to work on the, you need to work on the stuff north of sea. You're gonna wanna start moving your carrier up the nine line to support the two battleships that are pushing. Uh, the gearing NC is not assisting them. There is a Kiev, and if you have the ability to kind of help them bust through, that's what you're going to have to work on now. The Minnesota's overcommitted, and it's going to be bad, but you're not going to solo kill a Venezia. There's nobody else there to help shoot it, and for all intents and purposes, the gearing has fucked off. So, you no longer have a gearing that's trying to secret mission sub you, so you're going to have to work on helping your Minnesota and your FDG figure out how to get off of the 9 line. So, torping the Minnesota is going to be the key to that, so let's look at the Minnesota here. Where are you going? Where are you going? 
Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota. This is the line that you want. Ignore the Kiev. Start your attack, start your attack, start your attack, because you could use the island to block AA by having your planes go low to the surface. There you go. Oh, I'm dead. Who cares? Just kill the Minnesota. Kill the Minnesota and keep getting over to the nine line so you can help with this as long as possible. It'd be really nice if one of your surface ships gave a shit about the gear. Torps, yeah. Torps are the correct choice. You're just gonna slam as much damage as you can into these battleships to try to help yours kill them. Uh, because that's all you can do. And the Venezia is moving toward Bravo, which means the gearing's gonna start trying to kill the Venezia instead of you. Free drop because you're going to be striking into a fighter. Save your boost for getting through AA. Now you can accelerate in. Problem solved, sir. Cool. Do it again. <clears throat> Alright, so you have an FTG with some health, and there's still a battleship you have to work on. The Kiv, the battleship, whatever. You need to get the FTG back in the fight. The Thunderer has a Venezia and a gearing frontlining for it, so the Thunderer is going to be okay. So you are helping the FTG. So Veneto is your target. Try to save some boost for when you have the attack. Yep. You might end up tripping across the DD, which would be nice as well. Cool, you're inside Flak. Hit him again. Remember, what? after you left click, after you drop the bombs, you can already start turning. You don't have to wait for the bombs to drop. Ooh, yeah, you're funny. dead. Just get out. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. These planes are dead. So, next, you know, if you didn't hit the flak, you might have been able to use them. You did. It is what it is. Stuff happens. So, uh, torps. You cannot torp from the left side. He's too close to the island. You have to go wide. You have an engine boost. Yep, I used it once I'm close. Use it, use it, engine boost, engine boost. Alright, well he's dead, so it's fine. Your FTG has no health. You have to do everything possible to get your to keep your dude alive. So any tool resource that you have that can change that fight, you have to use when you have it. Uh, plus the engine boost lasts like 30 something seconds, so using it earlier is gonna be the better choice because you're gonna get more use out of it. Woot. Good shit. Alright, so there's a Yoshino with full health. That's going to be a real problem. Can we find out what's going on mid? Unfortunately, yeah. I don't think you're going to kill a Yoshino on your own. The FDG might be able to help, but he's going to be shooting at it anyway. So, what's going on mid? Is there anything that we can do to help over there? There's a gear, gearing and uh, still alive. Okay, gearing is still up. Go for the gearing. The gearing. Unless that battleship has, like, no health. No, I found out. Wow, we're down health by 150k. That's not real, <laughs> because you haven't seen their CV, you haven't seen the battleship, you haven't seen the gearing. So, it that number is based off of last known information. Alright, you're not going to kill a half, a half to Georgia. You don't have the planes for it. You have to be on the gearing. You have to work on the gearing and stick on this dude. He's going to have defensive fire again, but uh, anything that you can do to provide your Venezia with a kill here is going to be really, really big. 
Especially when the Thunderer gets in the match. Because this gearing is like, uh, he's zoning everybody, he's causing a constant amount of problem for people. Stand. Save your boost, don't use it in the turn. You need the boost so that you can place the reticle to hit. Good. Let's work on the Georgia. The Yoshino is unfortunately very powerful, but it's literally full health, so you can't work on that. So let's help the Thunderer work down the Georgia. Thunderer has 137 health, so that's not going to be for very long, but still, that's the next play. As long as the Venezia doesn't need a Torp, he's going to take A as well, which is really nice. I think I leave where my CV is. I don't want to go forward. It's not you, you have to leave it there. There's If you go open water, it's easier to shell you down. Realistically, the, the Pobeda or whatever kills you as soon as he knows where you are, but he doesn't know where you are right now, so... We get to work on the Georgia. Hopefully you get two strikes in here. Lead him away from the cap. If you tack from this angle, he's going toward a cap. Drop at a distance. Drop, 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 drop. Because you at least maybe you can get him to point his nose at torpedoes that haven't reached him yet. So if you drop it a long distance, you can kind of keep him on a line. But in the future, when trying to torp here, don't torp from the direction of B, because that's just going to tell him to nose into Bravo. Lead more. Georgia can almost outrun your torps. Don't watch this. Okay, cool. Bombs. Work on the Georgia. You cannot kill the Yoshino. Four minutes. Oof. Well, y'all have a cap lead. The Yoshino's gonna take C. You're gonna kill the Georgia, so he's not gonna take Bravo. Plus, spotting the Georgia's gonna give information for the uh, Venezia to hopefully outplay. Um, Georgia's 38 mil, but Dak, I think, is He's gonna mil. heal as well, so it's just... Engine boost. Oh, Full speed. Engine boost. We don't have time for this. Engine boost. Refill it, get in there, get the strike. Try and strike twice. Watch the flak. You don't have a second strike. Bail. Rocket planes or torps? Dead. Okay, cool. So you can harass the Yoshino at this point and delay him. You could work on the Pobeda, but it's unlikely you're going to get something significant with that. Then again, that might be something that you have to do. But we can definitely screw with the Yoshino and get reset after reset after reset. Recall. Torps. Good. Sorry, he was going behind island. So he will, but you can use start your attack, start your attack, start your attack. Oh, I thought you were in Torps, damn. Uh, if you had your, no. if you had started your attack, you would have been behind the island blocking AA. Torps. Now he's turning into the left. You want to block him from pursuing you. You want to actually go north. Do not attack. Do not attack. Go north. You want to pull him away from you. Or you could strike from the south, however you want. You want him not going in your direction. Keep him busy, keep him moving in a direction that's not toward you. Bombs. Nice. Plus you burned his fighter. And that's going to be match. Ah, oh, just that job. Too bad. Okay. So, that's big thing, big thing to focus on is if you're going to strike something, it's not about you killing it. It's about you working with the team to cripple something that's either threatening the team or work on something that your team can help you kill. So wherever you're applying your attention, wherever you're applying your damage, it has to have results. You went after Kiev early, you got some damage in. You were down to a single bomber. 
You could have floated around and spun around and tried to light him as long as possible, but the shells weren't going to get the kill. How do we know this? Because you dropped a fighter and the shells didn't get the kill, and you being in a single bomber wasn't going to do it either. So once you had dealt damage to the Kiev and the Kiev basically effed off, great. Mission success. The Kiev is now backing off behind battleships. He's no longer a front line, no longer spotting, no longer a torp threat, no longer a gunboat, nothing. Just gone. Next was the gearing. The gearing pushed through mid. Nobody was handling it, which unfortunately means, congratulations, when nobody is handling a problem, it becomes the CV's problem because the CV's the only one that can handle it. And you at least got to spot him, detect him, you ate some torps or whatever, but it could have been much worse had you not gone after the gearing. He probably would have taken you out and maybe also a battleship as well. He already took a Napoli and however the hell else much damage that he did. And then after that, it was finding targets where you could assist your team to take positions and to do things. Where we worked on the battleships in the north so that the FDG and the Minnesota could at least trade kills and get off of the 10 line or 9 line to be able to do things. Uh, so it worked out. That was a really, uh, really close match there. <laughs> but uh, good job. Do it again. Thanks. That is a lot of battleships. Action stations. Why did you start Torps? Oh, sorry, I thought I pressed the rocket. I was wondering why so. Uh, oh well. <laughs> so I was looking at something else for a sec. I pressed the wrong button. Yes. It's not good. He's gonna fight her, you? Yeah, I'm sending away from him. Flying away from him. You should fight her here. <clears throat> fighter airborne. Unfortunately, the torpedo planes are very slow. Um, maybe you can catch a battleship in transition in mid or something. I don't know. Yeah, go for the last little piece of Doesn't have no AA anyway. Uh, it has more than you'd think, but yes, it's not that great. Uh, save your boost for the attack. There you go, now you can commit in. I think you just strike through the champagne. Yeah. And heal, by the way. Heal, 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 heal. Lead more, lead more. There you go. Bombs. Because there's going to be an ample front line. There's the sub in mid, there's the the destroyers, etc. Good news is the Kiv seems to be doing fine. Uh, capping in the Kiv, I don't know about that. <clears throat> but he does have a smoke screen, which is nice. You, left, left. You need to work on A. You need to work where your team can have influences, and right now that's the Kiv in A. They're shooting at him already. Try not to blow through all of your boost. Do you remember the um, cruise control technique? Yeah. It's tough when you get excited, I know. <laughs> Maybe okay. rocket would be a better choice. 
Uh, it's going to take a while to get there, but bombs are the most influential option you have. They're the best tool for interacting with this. Now, the Kiev gets out, but the Sen Yang is going to be in front of where you are. You'll probably trip across him in just a moment. Yeah. And you did, so I he go. smoked. So it's not so much about you killing everything, it's also about, you know, pulling out resources. So you got him to smoke, which was nice. Left click, left click, left click. There you go. You want to get reloading as soon as possible so you can work on the Kiv. Kiv? I don't know how you say it. We really need to work on your curling technique. Good job. Recall. Merker on the 9 line or the sub in mid. Go help spot the sub. Because the U-boat only sees him because he has Hydrophone. So as long as his Hydrophone consumable is helping him, then the U-90 is fighting his U-90, whatever. If that Hydrophone runs out, although, god, are they gonna ram each other? Why are they charging each other? Um, if their Hydrophone runs out, they don't get to see the other, the other player. Like, just now he disappeared. So, go ahead and drop a fighter here to give him information, and hopefully your guy will outplay. Although, I think they are fairly new at this. But maybe the depth charges will kill the enemy. Let's see if we can get on that Merker. Yeah. Well, yes, but he's not going to be in the smoke forever, and we need to be ready when he's not. Because you do not have much of a front line. You have an Asashio that all the Asashio is doing is backing up. And there's a pretty heavy push on the 10 line. So, smoke. The smoke screen. See if he's there. You are detected. He, he doesn't have to be in the smoke. He could have left it. Uh, I think I detected by Cleveland. Well, it doesn't matter what you're detected by. You still got to check out the smoke. <laughs> yeah. Try to. All right. Well, you at least forced the CV to do something. Uh... Okay. Well. I think you got some damage. Uh... Yeah, four hits. Nothing much, I guess. So, this situation, do you help A side or D side? Yeah, I'm thinking about the two. I think it's A. Um, because the two battleships and cruiser are on top of each other, you're going to have very little influence there. And I was hoping that the Merker was going to poke out of a smoke cloud, you know, when, eh, there's nothing to shoot. And then you could trip across him. But he didn't. He stayed in the smoke till the end, and the other ships are moving up. So... The Merker has significant AA coverage, which means you really can't bully him. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be time to work on the A side and watch out because the Bismarck on F2 is pushing. Uh, fairly soon, if he keeps YOLOing, he's going to trip across your detection. You might want to start moving your carrier a little to the south, just to give yourself a way out when you can. Engine boost. Don't F with it. Engine boost. You're avoiding a flat cloud. You get to drop twice. Yeah, you have to ignore the DD here. Don't forget, you can turn while the bombs are dropping. You need to start curling for the follow-up drop. Because if all you're doing is flying away from your target, then it's going to take you longer to get to your target. Cool, Torps. Good job not waiting. You need to move to the south... Southeast? Autopilot mode enabled. Yeah. Or at least just, I guess, to the south, because you may actually just have to turn around. Looks like A is completely collapsing. You had one or two ships over there, and they seem to be dead, so... Well... You can't charge to the west either, because... There's still a bunch of shit over there, too. <clears throat> that Bismarck's running low. I would drop on this nearest Bismarck, and I'll fly over to other Bismarck. That's fine. Oh. I'm going to use a heal after a drop because I'll be, I'll be within 2 AA range. No, oh, my bitrate's bad. People are saying it's buffering. So, it's not much I can do about that. Try to restart the stream, I guess. <laughs> 